Tim, let's talk about the numbers. I, uh, up until now, we've seen incredibly strong data. We're seeing a little bit of a dip now, but these are still incredibly elevated figures. What message should I be taking away from these numbers? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Hey, thanks for having me. And first off, we had a fantastic month of July, and we really moved towards accomplishing a much better demand-supply balance, which we've been out of balance now for quite some time. The supply side is really restricted growth. And I think what you're seeing here is a bit of a timing an issue. So we had a really good, strong demand, as you mentioned, uh, Guy, that was really good new orders. But probably more importantly, our backlog remained at near record highs. And the, our customer inventory shelves are still empty. We, it's, we hit a record low of customer inventory. So mm -hmm. that really bodes well for the future. On the production side, you did see the production numbers ease a little bit as employment came up. And I think that's more of an, a timing issue. You know, you need to staff the factories to build. So we should see some improvement there in August. Yeah. And a lot of story on the input side, supplier deliveries eased a little bit. Uh, inventory is contracted again, meaning that the factories consume more than they could actually receive some, some from the suppliers. So again, another timing issue. So overall, a really good month. Uh, and I think uh, one of the big stories here is really the transportation side. Transportation side continues to struggle at both the ports and the road freights. Yeah, Tim, so let's dig a little deeper then into uh, the bottlenecks. I'm going to just going to pick on one point you mentioned that's inventories. If a customer inventory gauge is at a record low right now, how quickly do you think that that can build up? And what's the biggest hurdle into doing that? Well, I think once we hit the proper demand supply balance, it's probably going to be a two to three month activity to refill all the inventory accounts, not only the customer inventory, but also the raw material inventory accounts at our panelist companies. So that's really positive upside. That's that leads me to believe that even if the demand starts to soften as the year ends, we still got a very good Q1 of 2022. Mm -hmm. Do you expect the, the situation on the employment side to continue to ease? This is the big question that everybody's asking themselves as we go towards September. Schools go back. Uh, some of the, uh, the state um, and federal assistance starts to roll off. Is this a trend that you expect to continue? How tight is the labour market? Well, I've received a lot of comments from the panellists. You know, think hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And I track the employment comments very closely these days. So... What I originally was tracking was higher to fire ratios, and it's not worth tracking anymore because no one's firing anymore. But I do, I do track the higher to force manage ratio, and we again ended up in a very strong month of a 13 to one higher to force manage. The force manage is really attrition, retirements, and hiring freezes as well as furloughs and, and firings. So we have 13 companies reporting hiring versus every one reporting some amount of force management. So mm. really strong number. I think a lot of the comments indicated that there was some amount of easing on the employment side, the hiring side, but we still maintain a relatively high rate of turnover. For the second straight month in a row now, we've recorded 18% of our comments are turnover related because people are jumping jobs for additional pay. 